Hey YouTube, Carl Elwine here. Uh, today is going to be some engine building. I've got working on finishing. I'm putting the heads on. Daniel Peterson's. Hey Daniel, how's it going? It's number 93. Look it up in my webpage, uh, the LWineEngines.com. You'll they're listed in sequence, and you'll see previously the short block on this being built. This is a custom diamond piston. Uh, no, it's not. Coated uh, Wisco piston. We got Comp Star rods. Uh, this is going on a twin turbo F body. So I'm going to put the cylinder heads on today, prep the deck, make it nice and clean, show you the chem chemicals I use uh, to clean this in order to put the MLS, like the Cometic gasket, is what we have today. So this has, is going to be removed. These are the retrofit. LS style lifter holders. These are coming out. The Johnson slash Crower lifters are going in. So follow along today. Enjoy. See if I can show something that might be of use. Tech Tuesday, don't forget. lifters, late model. Okay, hydraulic. The part number for, to these crowers, uh, it's probably the best value in American made. Their part number for from Crower 66310LM-16 of set of 16. The LM stands for late model being that late model. They need to be 0 0.300 inch taller than your traditional small block Chevy than Gen 1. So you have a block with a sort of a taller lifter bore boss, regular lifters, small block Chevy lifters will not uh, go down far enough. These have to get soaked in oil before I put them in. Wow, beautiful, see what we have here, Johnson, link bar, I, known throughout, uh, uh, the word on the street is USA made Johnson, uh, a lot of the Crower stuff is USA made too, but um, what can I say? We'll get, have to get these soaked in oil. I just wanted to do an unboxing for you. 38, oh, actually 15W40. Regular conventional oil. Usually before I put them in, I roll them in my fingers. See how they feel. You expect perfect quality from uh, lifters that cost like $750 a set. But part of the assembly process is to check for, I don't know, someone else's error. Double check your errors, minimize mistakes. Ooh, this is going to get high. Those roll, those roll good. Maybe they're not packed with grease, like basically just use oil. Because a lot of them have a, like stock hydraulic LS7 lifters are kind of packed with a grease. Nothing wrong with that. Just, and the last one's going to put me over the edge there. Oh 
Well, what can you do? These are awesome. Check this out. Yeah. Okay gang, one thing that I do is I use microfiber cloths. I don't use paper towels generally. When the motor needs to be clean, I'll use paper towels when it's being uh, initially ground off or painted or clearance for stroke. But when, after it's had its final cleaning and uh, pressure washer and soap and water and dried and oiled, and it's easiest to keep lint off with these lint, uh, less lint cloths. Um, so I do a lot of vacuuming, air blowing, microfiber cloth. They keep a, they're, they're actually a good price nowadays. Get them either from Amazon Basics or get them from Harper Freight. These are my cleaning towels. So even the cylinder walls. That's what I use. Now I'm going to get the vacuum and vacuum up any dust at that. Oh. Got the lifter bars all nice and cleaned up. Can only go one way with the link bar out. And stock is usually the best because the factory it is unbeatable in how they assemble things and leak test things, balance things, get the right bearing clearances, the perfect cylinder hone. Although they're you know they're weaker parts. Yeah, this thing I feel here. That's good. They all slide in there nicely. All right, so we're gonna clean these, we're gonna chase them. I'm gonna use an existing uh, head bolt, 7 16 coarse thread, because I don't have my, I lost it, I guess when I organized. All I have is this half inch thread cleaning. It's not really a tap, but I used to use these. I lost my 7 16 
All right, now thorough wiping with acetone or you can do brake clean or you can do um, mineral spirits. Okay, now we're gonna, what I've done is went to the parts cleaner and cleaned the studs all in the parts cleaner. That's outside and it's raining out now. I'm glad to be done with that. Uh, what's next is to carefully lightweight oil the cylinder bores and because I don't want to get any oil on the deck surface. You got to be careful about this stuff. Just a little dab. Very little bit. Then I spin the crank so I can get the uh, ones where the piston's up near the top. Very lightly. Then again, keep cleaning the deck on where the oil may have come. Up here. Up to the top. Oil is good, but not for the deck surface. Anyway, now we're going to put head gaskets on. They're comedic. Make sure you have clean gloves. Uh, I get latex. Latex are my favorite, but nitrile. Always have clean hands and I make sure it's basically to keep parts clean. and. There are numerous what things you can do with your, or techniques with your multi-layer MLS head gaskets. Uh, old schoolers, a lot of spray copper, um, I guess copper sealant in between and on the surface of this. And Cometic says do not put anything on these. They need to slide a little bit. It works either way, so. Sometimes I spray, sometimes I don't. <laughs> These are the 40 thou. Make sure you have this uh, core plug right there. You don't want to forget that. The reason I put the head gaskets on first is because this, this, I like putting the studs on after the head's on. If you look right down there, hopefully you can see. I grind right here so that you can have clearance or oil return. I grind the block. You can see right there where I ground it. That gives you oil drain back. Okay, I'm back. I got the heads. These were nicely refurbished and spring height set by Jim Morgan, Morgan Racing Engines. All this stuff has to be free of oil and solvents. 62.5 cc's.
those are. That's where it is, okay. This guy here. Don't worry, the, it's on the dowel so it won't fall. That is a possibility. All right, a little bit of stud cleaning here. I have these in acetone also to get the residual brake uh, safety clean. I actually did the safety clean outside. Uh, minimize fumes uh, whenever possible. We're doing the fine thread part. Kind of spread it out here. This stuff makes a mess. The goal today is to get the heads torqued up for our Tech Tuesday here. Um, ARP head studs clamp better than a bolt because you can you just thread thread it in, uh, gets threaded in. It doesn't do the clamping. The uh, stud stretching does the clamping. Therefore, uh, these uh, these get torqued to 80 foot pounds. But the clamping. All right, now we're gonna RTV these thread these studs. I'm off camera, but we're gonna RTV the threads that go into the block. Uh, I use you know people use regular old the. Uh, ARP thread sealant and I found that that just doesn't work uh, normally for some reason I don't know why on studs it doesn't work it works really good on bolts head bolts the only thing I can get to work is this RTV and I use the right stuff it's called black right stuff RTV one minute right stuff black what I use. Use that on the thread there, and then this is a ARP thread loop. Okay, I ran the studs all the way down lightly with my uh, drill impact, not real tight. And then I want to put these in the final tightness just uh, with the hand. And now the torque wrench. First round of uh, torquing. I do 65. I just did 30 foot pounds with the impact wrench. by a 20 year old kid
Hey, YouTube. This is Carl Elwine, Elwine Engines. Uh, hey, today it's uh, engine assembly work. ERE number 93. It's a four twin turbo. 